My name is Carl on BBC Three Counties Radio, live this evening from Campbell Park in Milton Keynes, where we're here for the Eve Festival. It's the second final day of this weekend celebrations that mark the end of Ramadan. There might be some people making their way home, but there are still plenty here. The fairground's still buzzing away in the background. You've got various people winning prizes and the merry-go-round going round and people on the bouncy castle and the food sales still up. We'll be talking a little bit more to some of the cooks that have set up shop here. But I want to keep on the theme really of what's a big part of the festival here in terms of informing people about Islam and education. I'm here with two people that are part of, of Wami. I've seen it on your cap, Zayn, in front of it. <laughs> Wami.co.uk. Um, just tell us what you do. Okay, um, thank you for, uh, you know, for coming on radio. Uh, we are a community organization, um, a youth organization. Our aim is to bring the communities together and trying to understand each other in a, in a diplomatic way, you know, because there's a lot of misunderstanding and that's why every year we come here. Well, it's interesting you, you talk about misunderstanding, but I was speaking to Adil a little bit earlier who's volunteering here and giving out information. We just spoke to two lovely ladies who have been here and they were talking about, oh wow, this is actually answering people's questions. We're not closed off religion. And now you mentioned misunderstanding as well. Lots of misunderstanding about Islam, you say, where's that misunderstanding coming from? Okay, mostly people, they, uh, they either read it from newspapers, either they don't uh, you know, ask questions from other communities, like, I had a couple of people, they didn't know nothing about uh, Ramadan or fasting and stuff like that. So we gave them literature and they said, wow, that is really uh, eye-opening for us, because we didn't know, we thought that you people fast whole yeah. So you mentioned a really interesting point. We are exactly 58 minutes into this program. I can sit on the clock in front of me. We'll get the travel news shortly. You mentioned that. It just struck me in my head. We've been talking about Ramadan and Eid. I have been come through for the past hour. There might be people out there who have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay. Just just tell us for what, what Eid means for you. Okay. Uh, today, evening, is, is, is a great opportunity to meet people from other communities. And that's the reason I actually, we usually come here. Because it's such a great opportunity uh, to meet people and uh, to answer their questions. And but if people ask you what Eid is, obviously Ramadan is a month yes. of fasting. Have they been unaware of what the significance of Eid is? Yes. We usually say Eid is like when the fasting finishes and people they celebrate the Eid. Mostly it's good for the children, you know, like taking them out of parks and, you know, like uh, visiting neighbors, you know, like relatives and something like that. Well, Nasir is here as well. I'm going to speak to you shortly. Let's just very quickly grab your travel news. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. The wind is slightly picking up here at Campbell Park in Milton Keynes, where we're broadcasting live from tonight on BBC Three Counties Ready. The first time we've had the chance to take the show out. We're at the Eve Festival, two days of celebrations. The Celebrations are just beginning to wrap up. Just before the travel news, I was speaking to Zahid from the World Assembly of Muslim Youth. I've remembered it. Wami.co.uk on the hat. Nasira is here as well. Hello, Nasira. Hello. You're from Wami as well. We spoke earlier, actually. I was very interested in, in your story. Just tell our, our listeners about where you're from. Mm. I'm Algerian of origin and I lived in the country for 26 years. It just happens that I walked in uh, to the Eid Festival and uh, Wami was ready to recruit me as a volunteer. And I was very happy because to help to clear some misconceptions around uh, what's going in people's mind, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, I was talking about those misconceptions yeah. just a minute ago as well. So give me an example, what sort of questions have people been asking you at, at the festival? Um, mainly, it's amazing. It's not just Muslims, uh, uh, non-Muslims actually. It's even Muslims. Some of them they are not familiar with their religion. So the leaflets for um, talking either about um, the ladies, uh, women in Islam, and uh, um, uh, the um, the embryology. Someone came about what's this embryology in the Quran, and uh, and I said it's all described scientifically, uh, word by word. You take verses and they describe how an embryo is um, sort of. Uh, in the womb of uh, the mother, the whole stages. So it's just amazing that people who are Muslims who are not aware of what's in the, in the Quran. Yes. Yeah, and you were also um, mm -hmm. a big part of the display that, that's in, yes. in the tent. We can't quite yes. pick up the signal from there, which is why we're out here, but a lot of it was about science and Islam yes. and sort of educating people about that. You mentioned women there as well just a moment yes. ago. What are the main misconceptions do you think about Muslim women? 
Unfortunately, like you said, people can't see me. I'm covered head to toe. And uh, when they see a woman covered, they usually they say, oh, she's oppressed. But uh, I started wearing my scarf and high scarf when I was 16 because uh, that liberated me from, um, um, from my women desires to make me uh, use my brain and uh, to sort of take part in society. I'm, uh, I went to university. I have a HND in electronics. So that's, I don't think that's oppression. No, you, you mentioned that. A lot of people yeah. say, oh, well, yes, she's come from head to toe. Somebody told her to. Uh, no, no. I, actually, it was my own choice. My parents was, were against it um, because they thought I was decent covered enough, so there's no need for me to be covered completely. But my religion, my, in the Quran, it says so. And uh, therefore, um, that's, that's the way I took for them. Um, uh, to, to do. Does it frustrate you then when people say, well, Muslim women, you know, most of them are quite oppressed, they can't really do anything, they can't leave home, some people say, and you know, they have limited freedoms. Is, is any of that fair? Um, it's not, but having said that, I work in school, I'm a learning support, and uh, I have um, uh, wonderful colleagues, and uh, they, they never have a barrier to ask questions, so, and they are quite fascinated sometimes when they come up with questions, and I'm more than happy, so people who want to be ignorant, they can carry on being ignorant, but people who want to clear up any misconceptions, they can ask questions anytime. Yes. And, and what have you made of this event itself? A lot of people saying, wow, actually, they've not been to something quite like this before. I, like I said, I spoke to a lady from France earlier who said she couldn't envisage something like that being there. How about in, in Algeria as well? Could, could you see an event like this being held there? Yes, in Algeria, in fact, they have festivals. I met a young lady who's um, um, an artist in the, the same tent where we, we had our setup, and she, she said she goes to Algeria every year uh, to Tilimsan, which is in the west of the country, a festival run to, to art and the exhibitions for all over the world. And the gentleman, another gentleman, the Chinese gentleman, Haj Noor, who uh, at the same time, he said he visited all Algeria. So it's amazing how uh, um, it's embraced the whole sort of cultures. And uh, the lady, she's Iranian origin and she lives in the Netherlands and the gentleman is Chinese. Because there's been a real multicultural feel to this as well. Have you been surprised by the amount of different people from different parts of the world that have come here to Milton Keynes? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because Islam is not it's for mankind. It's not for just uh, Algerian or Bangladeshi or Pakistani. It's a worldwide uh, uh, religion. So I have uh, myself. I have uh, German friends, uh, Polish friends, uh, um, Chinese. I mean, we have so many different nationalities. In fact, on Eid day, we had my sister who is uh, husband is Egyptian. My uh, sister, another sister, she is Irish. My brother who is English. So just to give you an idea about the background, and my friend who's German, she came too. So it's a... Um, wow, just, look at you with all the people that you know around. So I'm not surprised, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. that it's just a carry-on of my festival at home. Fantastic, Nasira, thank you so much for your time, and to you, Sahid. Thank you so much.